Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. Hi, Moms Making Six Figures. I am here today with my baby sister. So we have gotten some feedback on the podcast that I should probably introduce myself for those of you that don't know me. And um, just taking the time to sit down and introduce myself wasn't something I was super comfortable with. So I thought it would be really fun to have someone that has known me my entire life and has gone through this entire journey with me to maybe ask me some questions. So this is my baby sister, Tina, and I'm going to hand the controls over to you. So excited. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be fun. <laughs> so thank you for having me and giving me the honor of um, doing this interview with you. Thank you. So I, I know you have a lot of listeners now that are asking a lot of questions um, of you, actually, more mm -hmm. specifically. So one of the first things I think on everyone's mind is, so you're starting this podcast, which is, you know, a turn from what you've been doing in the past. So uh, why a podcast and why now? Yeah. Um, well, you know this. So I've really had on my heart for probably about the last two, maybe almost three years that I get to hear all of these really incredible stories of women. I interact with literally thousands of women, um, not only nationwide, but actually globally. And I've heard so many just incredible journeys over the years. And a lot of times when we're having that conversation. I'm always like, oh, I wish other people were hearing this right now where they should be. This friend of mine should be listening to this point. It would be so good for her to hear this story and this challenge that you overcame. And I thought that so many times over the years. And I just decided that at some point I would do a podcast, which you know, it just took me a little while to do it. The, the time, you know, I have two amazing daughters and a really, really full life. So it took a little bit of time to do it, but I'm really excited about getting, um, having the ability to let other women share their stories because I think we learn so much from one another and there's so many, there's so many stories that I've told you about over the years where I wish it was the person telling the story instead of me telling you the story. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess why now? You asked why now. It just seemed like the right time. Yeah, there's, I think that there's so much craziness, especially in this last year that's been going on in the world and the uplifting nature of these women and their journeys and the things that they've accomplished and the challenges that they've overcome. This is just a really powerful message. So I'm excited for everyone to hear all of them. I love yeah. that. I love it. It's so good. It's so refreshing to hear so many inspiring stories and, you know, what a great way to do it. So awesome. So the, the next thing I wanted to ask you is, um, so, you know, great inspiring stories. We, you know, love hearing the women and, um, what they've done. So what is your ultimate goal or vision for this podcast? Yeah. Well, I think our tagline really says it real women, real stories, real inspiration, what I wanted it to be were our girlfriends that had really pushed themselves and had success that I think a lot of them, even at the beginning of their journey, they didn't necessarily believe that they could have, but they learned step by step by step that they could. Mm -hmm. And we've gotten to witness some of those journeys very firsthand. And there's so many more of them that... Um, this is going to sound kind of funny, but you've heard me say it before. So I feel like each one of us is kind of like this jewel and we have all these facets. And sometimes, especially as moms, that facet is really shiny. But then when you get to see the other pieces really shining, it's a really, really cool thing to see. And it's, it's so inspiring for other women to be able to see that. And so that's my hope that that would really shine through. 
I love that. Ooh, I love the, the jewel piece to it. Oh, yeah. Ooh, good stuff. Um, okay, so the next thing I really wanted to ask you is let's talk a little bit more about how you got to this place in your professional career. Mm hmm you you could probably tell that story. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to tell that story? <laughs> I'll ask more questions about that. Yeah, um, there are a lot of a lot of I don't know hurdles. I guess bumps in the road. Maybe I had a lot of lessons to learn along the way, and um, it's been years in the making. I mean, I worked really hard, as you know, mm -hmm. to get to where I am professionally. And I think probably one of the things that I think a lot of women need to know is that I questioned myself a ton mm -hmm. along the way. You heard that. Mm -hmm. and um, But just kept taking the next step and taking the next step and trusting myself a little bit more with each step, I think. I think that kind of each step I took, I started to trust my intuition a little bit more and then trust my intuition a little bit more. Um, but yeah, it's been a journey. What would you say about that? I mean, you've been, you've been on this with this ride with me. Mm -hmm. You've seen a lot of tears over the years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I would say that, um, being in the behind the scenes of it all, um, and I know we've talked about before, so many people, when they look at someone that has success, they tend to just see all the good parts and, and then the end result mm -hmm. and not realize what was going on behind the scenes in going into that. So, I mean, this, the saying of, you know, a lot of blood, sweat and tears goes into, um, you know, hard work and, and success and accomplishment. And I think that's, um, absolutely true. So, um, I would, I think I want to spend a little time asking another question that has to do with it. And it's, um, I mean, what would you say is, was, um, like one of your biggest sacrifices or like one of the, the hardest, you know, things that you had to go through with this whole journey, long journey? Um, I would say the biggest sacrifice was time with the girls. That was the thing that I struggled with the most. But it was kind of, you hear that saying, you see it a lot now on Instagram and Facebook, pick your heart, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And um, I, if I had stayed in the corporate environment where I was, it would have been a very different heart mm -hmm. than the heart that I chose. Mm -hmm. And the heart that I chose gave me a lot more options and gave me the ability to spend more time with the girls, but I had to pay for it up front. Mm -hmm. And, and I think probably one of the biggest challenges in the beginning was we didn't know where it would go and if it would work. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot of the people that I love around me that very good intentioned, but were really questioning whether or not I was making the right choices. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was probably one of the most difficult parts for me. And I think anyone goes through that. You, it's, it's very natural, but when you're in it, it's, it's challenging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So true. Yeah. Yes. It's picking your heart and, and for a time being, right? Because mm -hmm. there is an end result to that. It wasn't going to be forever. Whereas most, you know, women maybe in the corporate world, there is no end in sight really with that, right? It's, mm -hmm especially if they want to keep moving up, it only gets worse. Um, so one of, one of the things I think that we talk a lot about is um, quality of time versus quantity of time, quantity. So would you say that, you know, that those sacrifices actually really taught you how to be more present with the girls? Definitely taught me how to be more present and taught me to <laughs> take things off of my calendar. I think probably the biggest thing that it is, it taught me that it was okay to say no mm -hmm. to things that were not really in alignment with either what I wanted to do with them or what I wanted to do in my career. Mm -hmm. So I've said no to a lot more probably in the last five years than it gave me, it gave me the, the strength to be more firm in my decision making mm -hmm. about what I did put on my calendar. That's so good. We could probably spend like a whole mm -hmm. time on saying no and 
protecting your calendar, but we'll, <laughs> we'll go on to the next one. Um, so one of the questions that I know that you've been asking a lot of your guests, you know, guests on the show is, um, do you have a book or podcast that you recommend or both? <laughs> both. Other than yours, of yeah. course. <laughs> Lots of them. Um, probably the podcast that I recommend the most, and you know this, is the Life Coach School. Mm -hmm. I love Brooke Castillo's Life Coach School. I think that there are so many amazing lessons that you learn in that. And the way that she delivers it is really powerful. Mm -hmm. um, the book... There are so many incredible books that I've read over the years, but probably Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway mm. would be the one that I feel like I recommend the most to people that I interact with. Um, yeah, there's a lot of leadership books that I love, but that's probably the one I recommend the most. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I need to add that to my list, apparently. <laughs> Um, so good. Okay. So the other thing I know that you've been asking a lot of your guests, um, is do you remember that the moment when you first accomplished making a six figure mm -hmm. income? Yeah. Tell us about that. Oh, I absolutely remember it. And I remember, so a lot of my very close friends and you know this, a lot of people don't know this about me, but I'm really private. And, um, I remember accomplishing it and sitting back. And I really didn't say anything to anyone in my life about it. It was kind of like this sweet secret that I felt like I had really done what I had set out to do when I started in my career, you know, years ago, just because we grew up with not a lot, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And um, I always wanted to make sure that I just had the options. Mm -hmm. And so when that happened, it just felt like, wow, I really, the hard work and everything that I've put in, like I did it. And it just made me proud of myself, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, um, it, it goes to show that, you know, when you grow up a certain way, it doesn't define exactly who you will become. You know, you just, you learn and and then you, you do, choose. Mm -hmm, you learn and you choose your own path. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing I wanted to ask with that same question, though, is um, so obviously you reached a point where anyone else would say you've like you've you've accomplished it. You're you're done. Right. <laughs> so what kept you going <laughs> beyond, way beyond that? <laughs> Oh my gosh. I think some of it is just the way I'm naturally wired, which you could probably again speak to. Um, but for me, I feel this sense of, I guess, responsibility in a way to, to show others. Because for me, it wasn't, a, oh, this was definitely going to happen. Oh, you can definitely accomplish, you know, this big goal that I had set out for myself. And it took a lot of learning and other people being willing to share and pour into me along the way. And so I just feel this, I don't know, I guess I want to be able to give that to other women. Mm -hmm. And I, I say this, you know, I've said this on a few of the podcasts. I love watching that light come on in women's eyes where you can see that they see that whatever that goal is that they have set out for themselves is accomplishable. Mm -hmm. It's going to take work and perseverance and probably growing more than where they are, but they know that they can do it. And that's such an incredible gift to mm -hmm. give someone mm -hmm. that that's what gets me up in the morning. Yeah. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so good. Just, um, you know, women who reach the level that you have and you hear so often that they want to then kind of give back and share that with others or just show others that it's, you know, possible and even beyond that. So it's awesome. I do and have for our girls. Yes. Mm -hmm. for, for children. Yeah. For mm -hmm. my niece and my daughters. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Katie said something, my older daughter said really something that was very um, sweet. She said, Mama, I love that when you decide that you're going to do something, you actually think you can do it. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. And I thought, wow, I, I want, I want that mm -hmm. for her and mm -hmm. for Alexis, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so good. Yeah. <laughs> 
So um, you mentioned before that you're a pretty private person, and I know this firsthand. Um, and I, so what what would you say to women who are in um, the kind of the same level as success? Oftentimes, tend to be really personal as well, and mm -hmm. keep a certain part of their lives very private. So, what advice would you give? Would you say, um, you know, it you you know, what helped you to open up? Did that help you? Is that something you would tell them to look into? Yeah. Um, wow. That's a, so I, I would say probably the thing that I've learned the most is that I need that really tight circle of people that I know love me no matter what, that I can come to and be incredibly vulnerable and there isn't judgment there, that, that was really, really hard for me. It was really hard. You, you obviously are different for me, but the other people in my life, it was, it was hard to trust that someone didn't have an agenda. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I'm really fortunate because I have some really amazing women in my life that are completely trustworthy, mm -hmm. but you do have to be a little bit careful about that, I feel like, because I've gotten burned a few times, and that's probably why I'm as private as I am. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so with consistency on mine, what, what are some tricks or tips for consistency? Mm -hmm. Probably the biggest one, if we weren't going to do a full course on this, <laughs> which maybe we should, um, is that you can't buy into emotion. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of women, I feel, let their emotion carry them away mm -hmm. instead of sticking with what they should or could be doing at that moment. Mm -hmm. And again, I think that for me, it comes back to, again, if it's on my calendar, I make it happen, mm -hmm. whether the emotion is there or not mm -hmm. because oftentimes we don't have the emotion but then when we do it the emotion comes right right yeah um so being your younger sister obviously is what I am um I've you know I've felt like I've had um two great examples for me right so we, we have our mother who has set that example and then and then I got the privilege of also having you right there behind her because we're a little distant in age yeah, so um, I just, I think that uh, that was one of the pivotal things for me in my life as well, is having both of you uh, mirror that. So, um, That's so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Maybe I need to say that more often. <laughs> um, so would you say, though, that, um, I mean, I don't know, obviously, from the older sister perspective, would you say there was something in that being that, I mean, you were almost like a second mom to me, if we're being honest here. So would you say that gave you something in what is, you know, what led to your success today? Yeah, definitely. I would, I did feel like your mother when I was younger. I hope that doesn't sound <laughs> yeah. bad, but we're eight years apart in age. Right, right. <laughs> and I always felt like I had Tina with me. <laughs> so I do, I do think that um, early on I felt like, I wanted to set an example for you and I wanted to make you proud. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I think, as I mentioned, looking to you as, you know, kind of like that second um, parental figure really throughout my life. Um, one of the things that really stands out to me as well is just, I actually watched you have a um, good work ethic and drive at a young age, like really young age. So, I mean, I don't know, I'm sure you remember, but I remember when you got one of your first jobs, I don't even know if it was your first one, but it was at the mall and it was some like, so not a clothing store, but almost like an athletic type of store. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. um, and I, I mean, I had to have been pretty young still, maybe even elementary school at that point in time. And already I felt like, um, it was setting such a good example for me as far as not just seeing mom do that, but also seeing you start at, you know, a young age and just having that drive and then the hotel, you know, working hotel and just, mm -hmm. I feel like every career I've seen you in, I've seen you have great success. Um, obviously most recent one being mind blowing. <laughs> so, um, 
Yeah, I would say that has been super pivotal to me. And I, and I think, you know what it helps with as well? I think some other women can relate to, um, like we were saying, you know, you have your upbringing that kind of either takes you down one path or another, right? Mm -hmm. um, and just knowing or having you show me that there wasn't a limit on what we could do, not only as, as women, but just in general, right? So there's just no limit. So you obviously have this drive in you, right? That's one of the things I think you've mentioned and, um, and most people would say they see that in you. So would you say that there was a moment in your life where that really came out or is there something that you could attribute that to? What, what gave you that drive? I think it was our upbringing that gave me that drive. I think I've always had it questioning whether or not I could ever make it really <laughs> come to fruition, I guess. All of the things that I wanted, were those were a lot of the questions along the way, questioning myself, mm -hmm. questioning, was I smart enough? Did I, you know, did I, did I, did I, did I, did I? Those were a lot of the questions along the way. And I still question myself, but my drive... I've always known I could outwork pretty much anyone. Mm -hmm. um, there's really, my work ethic is not in question, mm -hmm. I guess. Whether or not I had this skill set, some of the time that was something that I had to develop, but I think the drive has always been there. Would you agree? I would definitely agree, <laughs> yes. I think, again, it goes back to, as you mentioned, um, watching our mother and so, yeah, I would say it has a lot to do with wa watching her being a very strong woman growing up and setting that example of, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, we've been talking about mom and um, what, you know, how we grew up and some of the, the struggles we've gone through and seen. So maybe you can share, um, s you know, if there's any particular ones that stand out for you that really can help too. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we had a single mother that had no one else participating and helping to raise us or pay for anything mm -hmm. for us. And probably the biggest one that stands out for me, and you were too young to remember this, but um, she, I'm pretty sure, wasn't going to be able to pay the rent mm -hmm. and had, was pretty emotional about it. And I watched her go get a third job. And for her, it was always, it always seemed like there wasn't a safety net. She had no one to fall back on that could help her in any way. But it was always the decision that she would just figure out a way. Mm -hmm. And I think I just watched that a lot over the years. I think we both watched that a lot over the years. Mm -hmm. What would you say? Is there one for you? Um, gosh, I, yeah, I don't know that I would say there was just one particular moment, but I think you hit the nail on the head with just watching her persevere through so many challenges. And, um, and although she didn't really have someone to rely on, there are things that she could have done differently where she, she was relying on something other than herself taking care and providing for her children. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, and I think that just really set the tone. I've just always mm -hmm. grown up, you know, thinking that, you know, how strong we can be and how independent we can be and mm -hmm. so hardworking. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. The work ethic was definitely instilled very early. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So most people love to hear, you know, this is wonderful and inspiring. So give me the practical, right? <laughs> yeah. So what would you say is like your routine or your process or what are those steps that you take, you know, daily and weekly that just keep you going on that path? <laughs> That's a great question. Would you like to answer that? <laughs> <laughs> I probably could, but they want to hear from you. <laughs> I'm very what I like to call calendar aware. And if it's on my calendar, I do it. So I've built this, I guess, strength over the years in I get it done because I write it down because it's on my calendar, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that 
when you follow through on that, it builds a muscle, just like any other muscle that you build. Mm -hmm. And that's probably one of my biggest processes or strengths. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've talked a lot about this over the years. (laughs) And the word that comes to my mind is consistency. Yes. I'm very consistent. Very consistent. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it builds that muscle, right? Just like your normal muscles. You just keep doing it over and over and over again. (laughs) Even when it doesn't feel good, just like when you go to the gym, (laughs) you keep doing it. (laughs) And then it gets a little bit better and a little bit better. (laughs) Oh my gosh, that's so true. (laughs) So oftentimes, especially with the women that you've been speaking with in these interviews, there's, um, there's something in their previous career path that has, you know, kind of led them to where they are today. Mm -hmm. And I know you spent a lot of time in pharma and it actually in, in a, you know, in the bad, in the bad way, but led you to (laughs) something better. Right. Mm -hmm. So tell us about that. Yeah. The pharmaceutical industry was fantastic for me in a lot of ways. I really enjoyed it, but it also taught me that there were limits on what I was able to accomplish because of what other people decided. Mm. And that for me was probably the thing that pushed me the most to not stay in that industry because I just didn't like someone being able to tell me that I wasn't worth more, I guess, Mm. really Mm. at the end of the day. Right. Um, I didn't know I had this entrepreneurial spirit, but I think that that's really what it showed me was, okay, well, the only place that I can accomplish whatever I want to is to take a chance on me. Mm -hmm. And it's really what pushed me to do that. And I'm so grateful, Um, was super frustrated and that's what pushed me. So I, I really appreciate when I hear women kind of, you can hear them almost like battling with themselves. The frustration is there. And I think Mm. you're at a point where you're going to make some really important decisions for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, had that not been the case, I probably would still be there. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. So I, I have a question with that then, because it makes me think about, there are so many women that they feel like there is something on their mind. There's something that brews within them, Mm -hmm. um, but they want to stay comfortable, right? Mm -hmm. Because they have that career already going or whatever it is, but they know that there's something else that's pulling on them. Clearly you had that. So what would you say to them as far as (laughs) taking that? that There's a book out there on that. (laughs) Perfect. Tell us. Good is the struggle for great, right? Mm. I mean, there's many books probably, but there's one in particular. Yeah, I think it's really hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard when you're comfortable Mm -hmm. because you're comfortable. Mm -hmm. And to say, oh, but I really see this over. Am I willing to take the leap? And sometimes that that leap is really, really scary. Mm -hmm. But you learn so much about yourself if you do. And I think even if you fail, you don't really fail because you learn so much about yourself. Mm -hmm. And I would never go back. As painful as it's been at times, as challenging as it's been at times, Mm -hmm. um, I'm a completely different person because I learned to trust myself Mm -hmm. and that would not have happened staying where I was uncomfortable. Okay, so you obviously are um, in an industry and career that puts you around a lot of women. And some women would say that that is not the environment that they want to be in, right? Because there's a lot of competition and cutthroat and, you know, you know, clawing your way through, um, you know, other women. So so tell us more Mm -hmm. more about how you've done that successfully. I I completely agree with you. I think that in the corporate environment, it's almost like a prerequisite to not really, really, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I don't know, build up other women because I mean, honestly, you're always really fighting for the same positions or roles or Mm -hmm. I love what I do now because it really is an environment where women can build one another up Mm -hmm. and we don't have the competition and 
for me, I feel like that is one of the things that's really allowed me to thrive because I can really truly invest in helping another woman to see her strengths and not look at it as I'm in competition with them mm -hmm. or they're going to take something away from me in in that. And um, I wish we could all do that in a lot of different ways, right? But, mm -hmm. but it was one of the things that I struggled with in the corporate environment, as you know, was it was that I really want to be like really good friends with them and that's actually probably where some of my private nature came from because you really just couldn't. Mm -hmm. You just never knew, mm -hmm. right? And um, so, yeah, the, the entrepreneurial world is just different. Mm -hmm. And I love it for that mm -hmm. because you get to make it what you want it to be. Mm -hmm. So true. That's so good. It reminds me of, you know, you get to really like be in your own lane, right? I think one of the pivotal moments, even for me, as you were talking is in the corporate real world, realizing um, when I came up for a promotion and just people mm -hmm. you thought you were your friends and supportive in that environment and you see a whole different side. Right. Yeah. But when you're... And you, it's gut wrenching. Oh, it's, yeah. That's it's, what really, yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, that's, that can level you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And then when you have, but when you're doing your own thing, you're being an entrepreneur and you can kind of stay in your lane, it's still hard because there's still people in mm -hmm. the same industry, but, um, but it also showed you what, what you don't want other women to feel right mm -hmm. because you felt it. So mm -hmm. it gives you that perspective and the drive even more so to be like, that's not how this environment is going to be. Right. Yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons why your, your team is so amazing because you set that tone and that example for everyone else to follow. So um, I think we hear this often that um, pain pushes you and vision pulls you. And so we've heard a little bit about, you know, the pain that has right there. So what is the vision really ultimately that's pulling you through Moms Making Six Figures? Yeah, the vision for me is I want women, no matter where they are, to see that number one, they're amazing as they are and that they have value. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't, that doesn't change based on your circumstance in life. It's still there, you have value. And my hope is that with these podcasts, because I'm interviewing real women that have very, very interesting stories, mm -hmm. some of them very unique challenges, some of them have gone through more than others, but I think in hearing other women's real journeys when they can be vulnerable, mm -hmm. which is not always easy, mm -hmm. it allows for other women to see themselves in that. And um, I pray that that's what happens with this podcast, that there's women that hear someone's story and say, I can do that or I can make it through today. Mm -hmm. Or I can take that next step. And that next step gives them the ability to take the step after that. Mm -hmm. So I really, again, I just think that the stories of other people are really the things that move us. Mm -hmm. And so I feel really privileged that I'm able to, you know, pull in some, some women that will share those stories and be very vulnerable in it. Mm -hmm. So good. You've done, I think, a good job even in business with that, just being able to help different women see themselves and others because, not, you know, not one particular person, not, you're not always relatable to everybody, right? So you mm -hmm. know the strength in pulling in other people and having that help that, you know, other person that didn't maybe relate to your story or the mm -hmm. one person's story. Yeah. That's so good. We're all so different. Mm -hmm. That's so similar. Yes. Really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the last question I want to ask you, um, because it's also along these lines, is that so you are clearly a mentor to so many women and just, um, you know, a role model and all those things. So who would you say in your life was your, you know, biggest, whatever you want to call it, role model, mentor, influence that impacted this journey? Wow. Um, there's been, I think it at each stage, there's been different mm -hmm. people that have really impacted me. Um, 
probably the biggest one for me is actually not a female, but it's McKay, which you know, Mm -hmm. has poured so much into me over the years and helping me to just see life and business differently and also believe in myself. There were a lot of times where I really, really questioned if I could continue on and if I really had what it takes, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Um, There's been a lot of people that have been role models for me that I didn't have a personal relationship with. Like I said, there's podcasts that I've listened to over the years. I do think that watching our mother Mm. push through all of the things that she did when we were younger Mm. really set the stage for me to, um, I don't know, have the, just the strength, Mm -hmm. the strength and grit. Yeah. The grit Mm -hmm. to keep moving forward. Awesome. Yeah. Love it. There's been, there's been a lot. Yeah, it's hard to pinpoint one, it right? Because like you said, you there's do. different phases of this person is now bringing you to that next step. Or you helping. hear someone tell a story like mm-hmm. these podcasts and mm-hmm. you really latch on to something that they say that just instills that little bit of confidence in you that you need at that moment. Mm-hmm. But it might not be someone that in the future still has the same impact on you. And I feel like I've had quite a few of those over the years. Right. Mm -hmm. But as you know, I read a ton, Mm -hmm. and so that's helped a lot. So we've talked a lot about some different things. So what is one thing, though, that we didn't talk about or that you would want to share with someone, you know, who's listening, who maybe is early in their journey or just maybe at a pivotal point Mm -hmm. to share with them? I think the biggest thing is that you can do it if you want to. It really is just a decision. Mm -hmm. And for some people, they maybe really, really need to take the time to develop a skill set that will get them to where they want to be. Or maybe they need to pull in some mentors that can help them to see the path of where they want to go. Mm -hmm. But I really feel like as women, we have so many things available to us if we want it. Mm -hmm. But it's really that making the decision and committing to going through that process, which is not always comfortable, but you can absolutely accomplish whatever you want to. We're blessed in this country as women. I tell the girls that all the time, you won the birth lottery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, well, we've talked a lot about so many great things, so let's go ahead and wrap this up. Do you have any final thoughts, any like last words you wanna leave with the listeners? First, I wanna say thank you for doing this with me. I really appreciate it. Just that you can do it. Whatever that dream, that vision, to your point is that you have out there, just go for it. Really, go for it. Thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to momsmakingsixfigures.com. That's right, momsmakingsixfigures.com.